Welcome to our third session of our Employer Explorer Networking Series at our third annual Spring Career Week. We are so excited for you to join us again. This session will be recorded and we invite you to submit questions throughout the session into the chat with the understanding that we will save student questions for the end. Today we have the Pennsylvania Commonwealth with the Office of the PA Office of Administration with us to present information about their employment and internship opportunities and answering any questions that you have. I would like to turn it over now to Shelly Forte and the Office of the PA Administration. Good afternoon everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Working for the Commonwealth. My name is Shelly Forte as Rebecca nicely introduced me. I am the Director of Enterprise Recruitment at the Commonwealth. So, good afternoon and thanks for having me today. Okay, let's get started here. So, what's really great about working for the Commonwealth is that we have a unique opportunity in all of our jobs to make a positive difference in the lives of Pennsylvanians throughout your whole career here. Okay, and you know, our current challenge really is attracting and retaining the next generation work of workforce. Um, we in the Commonwealth um, are really at 9% of our population that's under 30 years of age. Okay, we've started a next generation task force to really utilize the, the young minds, the ideas, that that population has to attract additional um, talent into the Commonwealth so we really don't miss out on that population, that I, those ideas, that innovation, that that younger population, that next generation has um, to come in and really help the Commonwealth like navigate through all the challenges that we have here and I'll talk about in a little bit. But the other big statistic we like to share is that 19% of our employees are eligible for retirement in the next five years. So that's really close to 14,000 employees that could retire or could not, but that does open up a lot of opportunity for, again, fresh talent to come into the Commonwealth to help us really do great work do great work for the citizens of Pennsylvania. Okay, we have a lot of rewards or benefits um, at the Commonwealth. Um, we really care about the health and safety of our employees. We offer a variety of health benefit packages to choose from. We have a wellness program that we encourage everyone to participate in. Um, we have several options for financial planning. So retirement's a big one if you think about government. We have retirement packages, actually some flexibility in some of them. So we have some choices there now um, for retirement. We have investment plans that we offer, savings plans. A pretty cool feature of all of our work actually qualifies you for the federal public service loan forgiveness program. So that means, if you're not familiar with that program, the federal government um, probably about six years ago um, created the program and they wanted to offer some forgiveness for those people who went into public service. So all of our jobs really qualify you through that program. So if you come in, you work for us and make your payments timely for 10 year period, the remaining balance is forgiven. So a lot of our, our workforce takes advantage of that. We really care about everyone, like I said before, everyone's well being, wellness, health, um, which really leads us to talking about work life balance. So we have programs for time off, sick time vacation time, we have telework opportunities, flexible schedules, and really just all to ensure that you come to work, you work hard, you spend a lot of your time doing the work, and then 
we want to ensure that you can go and enjoy your life outside of work as well. So we have some generous leave program for that. And of course, we can't, can't proceed without talking about the culture, the culture of working for the Commonwealth. We have a culture of development and leadership. We want you to come in and learn, feel valued, feel included, and be able to advance your career through our development programs. So it's an exciting time to come into the Commonwealth because of all the benefits that we do offer. Of course, we have some perks as well, some discounts just for working at the Commonwealth. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. So at the Commonwealth, we have over 30 state agencies that really have their own mission to serve Pennsylvania. We have over 2,000 job titles in various categories and some of which are on the screen. We have several more. Um, we have over 72,000 employees, like I said earlier, across the state. But I want to give you a couple of examples of how our jobs impact you directly from being living in PA or being students and residents of PA. So when you woke up today, you brushed your teeth, you went to the sink, you put the toothpaste on, ran the water a little, so with no thought about the water quality, right? So we have a whole area, whole slew of job titles and people in them that are dedicated to clean water, to keeping our waterways clean in Pennsylvania, our lakes, our streams, our rivers, but also our drinking water. So we have engineers, we have specialists, we have analysts, we have all kinds of jobs in our Department of Environmental Protection that ensure that all Pennsylvanians have clean drinking water. Okay, and that's something you don't typically think about because you trust that we will deliver that service to you at all times, which we do. Um, another relevant example of how our jobs really help you or have touched you in some way, especially over the last year, the coronavirus, the pandemic. Immediately, we typically had, had public, serv public health experts <laughs> in our Department of Health. Um, but even more so, once the pandemic hit, we hired additional contact tracers. We ensured all of our communication staff was getting the word out about how to mitigate the virus, how to mitigate the spread of the virus. Also, again, putting testing centers in place, making sure that there were tests available. And then fast forward to most recently is the vaccination, the vaccine. So getting that out there, trying to add vaccine appointments out there to ensure that everyone who needs one that's in the first phase gets one. So we have hundreds of positions now just dedicated to ensuring that the communication is there, the mitigation efforts are there, the vaccination efforts are there, all for the pandemic. So those are all state employees. So just want to kind of give you examples of our jobs and how directly they impact the, the public here in Pennsylvania. Even if you're a student and you're not from Pennsylvania, okay, you are affected by the state jobs that happen every day and you may not realize that. So when we say we're public service, we truly are because we're affecting the public, our functions really lead into serving Pennsylvanians and ensuring the safety of Pennsylvanians. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure and point out that you understand the direct impact that our jobs have. So it's a pretty rewarding career here at the state. Internships, so let's talk about internships for a minute. So we typically hire over 2,000 interns every summer we have a variety of internship programs. Of course, we have a program called Commonwealth Public Service Intern, which is an intern to hire program. Okay, once you graduate, you go directly into a full-time job. Then we have several 
other internship experiences that really are for a summer or a semester. And they target either a two-year degree or higher or a four-year degree or higher. And they really get you either a focus in STEM or a variety of other majors as well. So we have a whole variety of what you can do even as an intern is pretty cool as well. And of course, as you know, it's important to do those internships to really build that skill development and the experience in your field. And then the networking is just out of this world that you can really gain in the field by doing an internship. Here are common majors um, for our internships, but again, even smaller fields that, that aren't listed here, we do offer. So we always encourage you to reach out to us if you have a, a unique major. Let us know. And Cassandra Hain, who's our internship and entry programs manager, she can try to help you um, find an internship that might meet your needs. Okay. And just to reiterate, we're one of the largest employers in PA. A lot of people don't know that. Um, we have a multidisciplinary environment, many career fields work together in the Commonwealth to achieve their goal and their mission for their jobs. And you're always working, and I've driven that point home a little, you're always working for that public, for that greater good, just beyond your own um, work duties. And again, of course, year-round opportunities, work-life balance. So certainly keep the Commonwealth in mind for those internship opportunities. So we wanted to kind of match up some of your majors here at HU with some opportunities we have at the Commonwealth. So we have a couple nursing opportunities that are master's level uh, opportunities. They require a master's to come into a certified nurse, registered nurse practitioner and the health clinic nurse pr practitioner. Okay, we have multiple fields within the IT and cybersecurity field. We're actually working on an IT apprenticeship to try to get even um, an additional population and train them up that may not benefit from having gone to a four-year degree. And then environmental sciences, we have the gamut. Biologists, many different kinds and specialties, and many different kinds of chemists. We have geological trainees. You can start at the entry level and We'll teach you how we do that work, and you can learn from there. Environmental trainees, we use a lot in our Department of Conservation and Natural Resources um, in a variety of areas, as well as DEP, which is Environmental Protection, and then Environmental Education Specialists. Okay. Okay, let me just, we have a unique environment at the Commonwealth because we have a civil service com component to our hiring. Just as you may know, so does the federal government and other states, um, which really means, well, let me tell you, we're about 70% of our jobs are civil service covered. It's merit-based hiring, we call that. And we call it merit-based because we require that you come in through an exam process or an assessment process which now, we modernized that a couple of years ago, which now is just mainly part of just applying. You click apply, you go through your application, then you answer questions about your experience or education. That then gives you a score, and then you're considered in score order for our jobs. Okay, the other 30% of our workforce is non-civil service, and that simply is a little bit different just because the way you come in does not require an exam. You still may answer questions about your experience, but there's no score given and you're not considered in score order. You're just considered just like any other company based on your experience and education, how it relates to the job. Okay. So all of our um, so our starting point, actually, for our jobs or our internships is employment.pa.gov. So always remember employment.pa.gov. You can click on open jobs to see what's open as far as permanent and part-time. 
but also there's an internship box right on the main page. That'll take you right to our internship listing as well. Okay. So once you click on Open Jobs, you have a choice right there to go to internship page as well, or you can go right to jobs that are open to the public. You can also subscribe to Job Alerts, and that will send you an email anytime that we have an opening for any of the categories that you choose to be alerted to. Okay. We also hired an intern about two years, two summers ago, who provided us with some pretty cool tutorials on how to apply. So we have those out there as well. And that was done by an intern just in one summer, actually less than a summer. So that was a pretty cool experience. If you click on our open jobs, open to the public, this is what you'll see. And really, our internship page allows the searching and sorting and filtering as well. But we typically have around 300 jobs open at any one time. We post every day, Monday through Friday typically. Um, we open postings, what's, what's open right now. And this will, since we have so many jobs, sometimes it's nice to just search as, for a keyword, which you're really looking for, then I'll narrow the amount of jobs you have to look through. Or you can sort, use the sort options that are listed here. And you can filter also um, by county, and it'll only show you those locations, what's opening in those areas of the state. So totally up to you, but again, it just allows you to kind of narrow your search to what you're truly looking for. Once you um, recognize the job title you're interested in, of course, all you do is click the job title and up comes the detailed information about the job. So we typically try to kind of give you a taste in the position section of what the job really does and what how it contributes to our public service mission. And then the description of work really tells you what you'd be doing on a daily basis or so. Of course, the requirements section, you wanna make sure you meet those requirements um, before applying. And if it's a civil service covered job, it'll tell you about the exam information, okay? But like I said, the we still have about 13 written tests out there that are required that will require you to go to a test center but the majority of our jobs are just you click apply if you're interested just like on this page just at the top you'll see a green apply button you click apply you go through the application and like I said you'll answer questions about your experience or your education or both and then you'd get a score from that if it's a civil service covered job Okay, and you're considered, you know, in all based on how you answer the questions, basically. What is your experience? What is your education that relates to the job? So it's you submit your application, you then review, your application is reviewed, your qualifications are reviewed, and then if you're qualified or in the top scoring candidates or in the top most qualified candidates, then you will be scheduled for an interview. And most of our interviews now are just done through self-scheduling. So you get a link, you go out there and choose your own interview time. And now it's either a virtual interview through video or just a phone interview. Um, and of course, at times it may be an in-person interview, hopefully soon. Sooner than later, we'll have more of those. Okay. Okay, so if you have questions along the way about the actual process on how to apply, you would actually just shoot an email to our PA jobs um, email or just give us a call at the main number. If you have questions about the job itself, like what that does, what the duties mean, then you just contact the person that's listed right on the post thing. Okay. And that actually concludes um, the portion that I had for you today. So just wondering what questions you may have. Well, thank you, Shelley. That was a wonderful presentation. We have gotten um, a good number of questions already um, that have been shared with us. So the first question,
Um, you mentioned about, you know, various opportunities aligning with some of our majors. One of the students asked, is there anything um, related to data science and machine learning internships or jobs available? Yes, we do. well, data science more particularly, um, we have quite a few little sections across the state that have um, data science as a major that's required for a job. We actually, the intern that just did those tutorials for us two years ago was hired into a HR data science type of position. So they are um, in pockets all around the state. So yes, and we have an official data scientist that works at the state as well. Um, and he really has gone through and worked uh, um, and got his degree um, in data science. I'm, I'm thinking of another gentleman who, um, now I can't think of, of the um, gentleman's degree. It was more associated with, um, and you all have this major, it was um, the learning through, um, I can't think of the, <laughs> sorry I blanked out on what that was. But we do have data scientist position and data science related positions that we have all across the state. So sorry about that blank out there. Um, so we do have right now, I see your question is remote positions. The next question, Rebecca? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So the next, so, if you want to talk mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So we do have quite a few remote positions, especially right now. And really previously we had some remote positions um, that were teleworking full-time or part-time. You know, of course, with the pandemic, many companies along with us um, were forced into really mostly remote. And that's how we've operated. We do have some in-person positions right now. But it'll be interesting when we feel safe enough and when the guidance is safe enough to go back, um, how many jobs will truly be 100% in person and it will probably be a lot less than previously. But we do have quite a, few, quite a few remote positions. We've been able to prove people can do their work successfully from home. So. We do have a telework policy that's in place and yeah, we're excited about the future to see those hybrid jobs, to see fully remote jobs really evolving. Um, with, you know, remote positions, um, students have learned from other organizations that internships have also moved remote um, and there may be a continued move to remote, but also on site internships. Um, how is the Commonwealth yeah going to be transitioning into internships and remote opportunities? Great question. That's a great question. So we've started to explore that possibility. We haven't, we don't have that as an offering right now, but we're talking about that. How can we do that and really make sure we're giving someone that meaning, meaningful experience that they want um, and require through their college a lot of times. So what we, um, we are hiring this year for summer interns um, on a limited basis, so we won't have the full offering of over 2,000 that we typically have, but we are starting to, we have some posted out there right now through our Department of Transportation. Our Fish and Boat Commission wants to hire interns as well in their, their hatchery, their fish hatchery. So, there are a few out there. You got to check out what's available on our internship page. But yeah, we really want to be able to get virtual with our internships because we think it can broaden our, you know, offerings in this environment and maybe in the future. Like to your point, Rebecca, other companies are doing it. So Cassandra is working on really presenting that how we can do it but we don't have any right now, <laughs> but very good so, question. Yeah, very thank good. you. So we have another um, internship question. So um, the student asked, how would you feel about interns from another state? So likely, you know, we have students from a variety of different states yeah. who come to HU. Would they be able to apply to an internship with the PA Commonwealth? 
Very good question. Most of our internships do not have the peasant Pennsylvania requirement, residency requirement. We do have our intern to hire program does have a requirement of you have to be meet the requirements of Pennsylvania residency, but even someone who goes to school here could meet that Pennsylvania requirement, residency requirement as a student. Not international students, unfortunately, but students from other states could. Um, next question is, um, there's a two-part question. I know I saw a student dropped in the chat. Are there any opportunities for someone pursuing psychology or even a master's in a psychology or a counseling field? Yes, we have several different counselor jobs. We have internship um, counselor jobs in a Department of Human Services. Um, and the Department of Corrections actually has quite a few as well. So we do, and we have quite a few, um, it's a kind of a hybrid between Corrections and Department of Human Services. We constantly have a need across the state for youth development aides, they're called. So that is adjudicated youth that need counseling. So we hire for those quite often. Um, so we do, we have a variety of counselor jobs. We have a variety, we have a trainee job that if you have a human services background like psychology or sociology, that would qualify you to come into the Department of Human Services and rota do some rotations to get some experience in the human service field, field of psychology. Good question. Wonderful. Thanks, Shelley. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Next question is related to internships as well. So we know the cybersecurity field is growing. Um, so the students want to know, do you have any internship opportunities in the cybersecurity field? We typically do, <laughs> we, but if that's an interest for this year, we can check with our cybersecurity director um, for you for this year. Um, I can't speak to if they have that approval to go with an internship this year program. But yes, they typically do and they welcome that. They're interested in getting students into the field and how the common and teach them how the Commonwealth really deals with cybersecurity because it is, I'm sure, different than the private company. Wonderful. The next is more focused on um, a full time position. So they were wondering are there any current or upcoming QA roles? Um, they come up from time to time. I don't know if we have any out there today, um, but we do have those positions. Um, typically, I think most of those are in the Harrisburg area when they're offered, but again, knowing this remote time, um, that could be a remote type of position. So we do have those roles. I just don't, can't speak to if we have one open right now for sure, but check open jobs page for sure on employment.pa.gov. Awesome. The next question we have is, um, could someone get an internship in their senior year? Yeah, absolutely. We have um, students sometimes come in during the school year, of course, and work part time, you know, around their schedule. Um, we also actually hired a some interns to hire in the field of HR. Um, it was actually, we did the hiring and they graduated and we had them do the internship and then move into their role, permanent role. So yes, it is possible for sure. And we would work with you to really on your schedule. It'll depend on your schedule, what you're interested in, but absolutely give us a give us a contact. I mean, Cassandra will try to help you. Cassandra and Rebecca can figure it out together. Yeah. Thanks, Shelly. Um, moving into, like, relating to that HR program, um, are you still offering um, that HR program or something similar to that HR program where you can intern for six months and it leads to employment? Yeah, we have not gotten approval to run that program again right now. We hope to be offering, um, we're waiting on budget approval, 
to be offering a HR um, trainee position. That would require you to have any degree, um, but it would require you to be graduating or have graduated for that program because that's a permanent full-time job. It's considered a trainee for a year, but it's in the field of HR. So our um, basically deputy secretary for HR has been really pushing to hire a class of those. So we're hoping either this summer or the fall to be able to offer the HR trainee position. It's called the Human Resource Management Trainee Program. So we're waiting to hear if that's funded and we'll be letting Rebecca, we'll let you know if we have a class that we're getting ready to hire for. Wonderful. Um, that sounds like a wonderful opportunity. I know when you had it before we had oh, some yes. students interested, so we'll definitely mm -hmm. um, be excited to share more about that if it comes through. Um, right. So another question that has come through is a student that is majoring in forensics was wondering, are there any internships or opportunities related to police investigation or things of that nature related to forensics? So very good question. So I know that we do have opportunities like that that come up um, either in probation and parole or state police. Um, so we do have um, those type of positions that come up. If you're interested in internships, again, Cassandra, we can see if we can locate one to get approval for an internship. As far as um, openings, that they just come up when they're available. Of course, the state police cadet, and that may not be what they're looking for here, but that is open now for testing, I know. Um, but we do have a variety of, of forensic related type of positions that are open mainly in state police you're going to see it or in the public safety type of agencies. Wonderful thank you Shelley. Um, mm -hmm. So the next question is we have, have a variety of students in the chat who mentioned that they are interested in um, government and the legislature. Yeah. Um, do you handle internships for the governor's office or state legislatures? If not, how would you recommend students yeah. learn about those opportunities? That's a good question. No, we don't. Um, that really is handled outside of state government. So that, um, I think you might have to really contact your state rep or or senator directly to see. I know they offer, almost every office offers summer interns for their um, district, you know, where they are. So I think you're going to have to do it that way. We may be able to get you a contact for the governor's office directly. Um, so we could check that out through Cassandra. If that's an Wonderful. interest, just the governor's office. Yeah, I know they sure. typically hire them as well. But the legislators, I'm just not sure if there's one central contact. I'm pretty sure you have to kind of reach out directly to each of those offices that you may be interested in. Wonderful. Um, the next question is, so we have a variety of students interested in pursuing graduate degrees. Um, yeah. They were wondering, would they still be eligible for internships um, with the Commonwealth with, you know, getting a graduate degree? Yes, we actually made a change to the um, intern to hire program to allow for that. It used to be restricted to only bachelor's level, but we had such interest from master's level candidates that we have expanded that. And again, I don't know if you remember seeing the slide, actually, I can and turn back. Um, that we do most of our internships say two-year degree or higher as well as the four-year degree or higher if you look at at our the internship slide here so absolutely we will certainly consider any talent at any of these levels absolutely wonderful uh, so another question that have has come through is mm -hmm. if somebody has applied for a research data analyst for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania lottery company pre-pandemic but it was canceled um, do you know um, is it going to be opened up soon 
I'm assuming it will be opened up again. It's not open now. I know that. Um, but yeah, a lot of our positions, unfortunately, once the pandemic hit, um, due to the budget, were were closed out and they were unable to hire. But I believe that that one will probably be opened in the near future, probably in a few months. Um, typically, they like to get the new kind of budget projection in, which is coming up here soon. So um, keep looking on the open jobs page for that one. You may even want to sign up for a job alerts for research or analyst um, categories. And then that way you're notified anytime a vacancy would pop up because yeah, those, that's a nice job out there. That's a nice job in that lottery headquarters in Middletown too. It's a nice building. And they may even work from home, you know, now. <laughs> Thanks, Shelley. Um, sure. Next question is, you know, many of our students are beginning to put applications out for their internships and jobs. Yeah. Um, do you have any observations and tips of what the Commonwealth recruiters are looking for on resumes? Oh, good question. So um, a lot of our jobs are pretty specific in what requirements they're looking for. So if you're kind of looking for a certain field, you may want to take a look at some of our jobs out there to see the requirements because you just want to hit and make sure you're covering your basis on you have what's required out there. Now most of our jobs that are posted don't require a resume. They want you to really put your experience in the application itself when you're filling out your online app. So keep that in mind too because they'll take a look at your application to make sure when you're saying, yes, I have four or more years of experience in nursing, let's just say, they want to make sure it's on your application as well to kind of um, double check and give you that score for that appropriate level of experience. So I would focus more as far as the Commonwealth on your application itself if you're truly applying. If you're just kind of communicating with us like through Cassandra, through our recruiters, they may say, do you have a resume I can check out? And they just really want to see what is your field? What experience do you have? So you don't have to overthink it for our recruiters because that's kind of the starting point for them to say, but you may want to check out this job title, this job title um, that's out there currently. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question that came through is, do you have any observations of what the interview process is like with the Commonwealth, whether it's virtually right now in a COVID world or in general, um, maybe when things change in the future? Yeah, so good question. Um, I think virtually what you're seeing now is you'll get, um, you'll either be on the phone sometimes, it's just phones, so you're not showing your face, sometimes it'll be video, but you're really um, going to see a pretty formal process from the Commonwealth. They typically have their questions prepared, they don't veer off script, they're going to, most of the time you'll have at least two people, sometimes three. Um, and you'll see a lot of note taking. They're taught to write down as much as they can of what you're saying. Um, so it's a lot of times you'll see head down or people typing your responses or notes about your response. So I, you know, I don't think it's super stressful. Some people get even more stressed when they see more than one person on the other end or hear one person on the other end. Um, but just the biggest the biggest thing for any interview is trying to relax so you don't continually stammer your words or um, forget what you really want to say like I did earlier. <laughs> you just really want to try your best to relax so you're not overly nervous because you know most interviewers expect that um, but really there is no need just try to Focus on the question and how your experience relates to it um, and just provide it as, as best you can, as clear as you can. But I mean, our interview process is a little formal um, and it's just, I think, the way government has been taught to, to conduct interviews. Um, but I wouldn't let that make you more nervous because, again, they'll be taking notes with their head down so you can feel free to continue to talk or they'll be typing 
and worrying about trying to capture what you're saying. So it's a little, it's a little less um, unnerving because you're not the f true focus. They're really looking at their notes or typing their notes. Um, but yeah, as long as I always say 100%, I've done hundreds of interviews, conducted hundreds of interviews with candidates, even at the highest level. And the, the best people, the best interviews are not the highest level candidates. They're the people who prepared ahead of time and are ready. They read through the job description a few times. They had examples of their work that they perform that relates to the duties, ready. You know, so, and you'll feel less nervous if you prepared ahead of time. So it's all about the preparation, in my opinion, no matter how the interview is conduct, conducted. I hope that helps. Those are some, <laughs> yeah, that really helped. There's some really good points, especially, you know, as all of you are preparing for your interviews, you know, that are upcoming and even they're going to be attending um, CPEC and we know you're going to be at the CPEC oh, yeah. Career Fair, you know, next yeah. week. Um, so just being able to connect with employers there, that'll be, you know, some great advice for them. So thank right. you for that. Um, so we have, we still have some couple, a lot of questions coming okay. in. Um, so the next right. one is, we know you touched on a little bit about um, the benefits, you know, that the Commonwealth you know, mm -hmm. offers and provides, but can you discuss a little bit more briefly about those benefits um, that you offer and that the private sector does not? So an example was a um, student mentioned that they saw that you promoted from within, um, but could you touch a little bit more about that difference? Sure, sure, sure. So we do, we do our best and the majority of the time, even if we post a job externally, sometimes we do promote with in at the same like similar times or if we have multiple positions we'll fill some externally but some within um, we're really putting a focus on um, talent planning so really asking managers to take a look at their workforce I mean their own work unit to determine hey the the junior staff that you have now what is it that you can do to develop them so they're ready for the next step when John leaves, you know. So they're, they're, the push is really to get managers to think through what is the training that's needed for your current staff to get them to the next level. What can you rec sit down with them and do a plan for them? And what do you recommend as far as what training or education if they need additional education um, or being sent to trainings for certification? So we have a lot of that going on, which is great. And then I think some um, companies may do that as well. Um, as far as our benefits, that I don't think that um, other companies do. I mean, uh, truly, we do believe in work-life balance. So we try our best. We have a bucket of sick leave that we offer as well as vacation time. A lot of companies just, you know, mesh it in together, I guess, and that's pay time off, PTO, right? So we keep it separate and we do, um, like we have additional leave if you want to go vote or go get a vaccine or, so that's in addition to all that leave as well. We try our best to allow people to use their leave that they have or even anticipate leave if they don't quite have it, but they know they're going to earn it. Um, so we do our best to encourage that and encourage time off. So if, I mean, we, we love that our employees come to work and work hard and are connected to their phones at all times and dedicated to work, but we also care about their mental well-being as well. So go take time off, refresh, come back, you know, and especially, you know, when people have a life event that's happening, um, we have, of course, and most companies do have this, and that would be an employee assistance program where you can get counseling, you can sign up for various legal services for, for a discount, all that stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we have. Well, we have a lot of really established training programs, which are, you know, we have hundreds of training courses that we offer. So we just have, um, 
a, a big variety and I think it's just because of the size of our workforce we really try to hit something for everyone um, and ensure that each of the areas have an option for training so how can I do better with leadership how can I do better with um, managing my employees managing my time managing my staff's time so we um, do a really good job with that type of training here at the Commonwealth and we've recently really pulled together training from different agencies to try to get the best of everything um, and offer the best to our employees as far as the variety of offerings that we have for training and development. Those sound like really great benefits um, especially that work-life balance I think is really important and we're seeing right, yeah. that a lot more, especially during this time. So it's, I think it's really yeah. important that you're highlighting and notating that. Yeah. So students uh, especially like take note of that. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, it really is. But I do want to jump in. I'm sorry, I should have talked about our retirement as well. So we, we used to have a retirement package that was just a pension. There were no choices in the matter. And that's what people, you know, old school, older generation that's what they wanted the guaranteed pension program but we've realized that the younger generation may or may not want to stay 35 years to get that full pension that they could get so we actually made some changes to our pension program most recently there's we have hybrid programs and it's it's a choice which one you'd like to um, engage in we have a 401k type of program just straight shot we have a matching program within that one it's not called a 401k, but we say it's just like one. Um, I think it's called 401a because it's a public um, employer. So we have that as an option, just straight investment type of plan, just like at a private company. But we also have two hybrid plans, part pension, part 401k type of a pro program with matching. So that's pretty good because they're a little, a little bit more mobile than a pension. And we figured, you know, we are we welcome talent to come in. The, we want the young talent to come in, share your ideas, your experience. And then if you want to leave and go get additional experience, just come back. Come back later. <laughs> so we wanted to create some mobile options as far as retirement, which is different than other companies. Typically, companies don't have a pension component to their retirement options. So that's probably a big difference that we offer to other compared to other companies. And then our benefits themselves are pretty darn good. Um, we're typically, if you think, I don't know how educated you are about the old kind of Obama plan, but we're, we are qualify as the top tier benefits packages. So um, even though we do contribute to, to our benefits, it's only two and a half percent if you participate in the wellness program. So it is um, still a pretty reasonable benefit, health benefit package and you have three choices in there. So it's all about, we want to try to give more choice to our employees. So there you go. Definitely helpful um, to know yeah. that as well. Um, so along the lines of like benefits, shifting gears mm -hmm. to like, would you be able to describe a little bit more what is the culture or company culture, as they say, um, you know, at the Commonwealth? Very good question. So our culture is sometimes different depending on the agency you're in, just because of the size of our organization. It's not typically one culture. Um, what we've really tried to make that shift in culture is inclusivity we're looking at offering employee groups uh, affinity groups um, we are encouraging managers to again encourage flexibility as much as they can um, but like the department of um, environmental protection the department of conservation and natural resources they have a smaller they're both smaller agencies so they have a kind of different focus that all their mission is environment, all their mission is conservation, you know. 
So they have a little bit of a different culture in there. They have their own affinity groups right within their smaller agencies. So it does depend on the agencies a lot of times, but the whole dedication to all cultures throughout the Commonwealth really is communication and inclusivity and development and leadership development. Um, so I hope I hope that helps. I can't give a, a solid one culture just because of so many different leadership components and agencies. Okay. That's great. With the along the lines of the like employee and leadership development, um, a student asked, "Does the Commonwealth help compensate employees that pursue a master's while employed with you?" That's a good question, and unfortunately, that is the majority don't but some agencies are able to. And that, so one example of that is the, well, it's not actually a master's degree, it's more of the CPA. So the Department of Revenue will pay for the CPA preparation course, as well as for you to sit for the CPA exam. As long as you pass it, you would get that reimbursed. So it depends on the agency, the field that you're in as well. There is not one blanket program in the Commonwealth that reimburses or pays for advanced education, though. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, sure. This is a unique question. Um, a student asked, what is a unique job at the Commonwealth that most people don't know about? That's great. That's a great question. Um, well, just top of mind would be real estate agents. We hire real estate agents at the Commonwealth, believe it or not. PennDOT hires quite a few. So we have um, a need for real estate agents to um, negotiate um, they would negotiate the sale of a right-of-way and property if they need to come in from a roadway into someone's property or a company's property. Um, they or just negotiate negotiate a sale of a building or a purchase of a building. Um, we do still have state buildings out there, um, so that's. Um, a unique thing. They actually have real estate agents in conservation and environment, several other agencies as well, a, a handful, and those are sometimes hard to fill because of the money you can make in the real estate industry in the private sector. So we do, I really, I've worked for the Commonwealth for 22 years and I just found out about real estate um, positions probably about five years ago. I'm like, what? We have real estate positions. So I thought that was a unique one. Um, but we have pretty cool ones like um, fish. There's a fish culturalist position where um, they are in charge of, of like making sure they stock the um, streams for fishing season. They They're in charge of determining, um, oh, they work at hatcheries too, to hatch and grow eggs so they can then hatch and then they're released into the various waterways where appropriate within PA. So that's a pretty cool job too. There's a lot of little type of unique jobs in the Commonwealth. Like I said, we have about 2,600 job titles in the Commonwealth. So we have so many, it's just such a variety. We pretty much have we cover any field you can think of, except probably manufacturing. So we have a variety, variety of fields in the Commonwealth. It's a pretty cool place to work. Yeah, and that sounds cool. I didn't realize about the real estate agents either, so yeah. that was something yeah. new for me to learn as well. Right. Um, right. Well, we have a final question here. Um, the final okay. question is, do you have any Final advice um, for students interacting with employers such as yourself um, at a virtual career fair and anything they should do or say to get your attention? Oh, that's a great question. Wow, what impresses me actually are people who say they're willing to learn, they take the initiative, they follow up. You know, that it's just 
how should they, you know, just, and don't be shy and try your best to sell yourself rather than talking in we's a lot. A lot of people say, well, we do this, we do that. Now, like, focus on yourself. This is your time to shine. So talk about, I do this, I've done this. I did this in school. I was worked with a professor. So it's really about being confident, smiling, okay, selling yourself. Those are the big three things. You know, try your best not to mumble and, and be shy. This is your time, especially in virtual fairs. Typically, you're one-on-one, -on -one, so just present yourself as confident as you can, as friendly as you can, and really sell your skills and what you have to offer. If you don't have particular focus at that point, then just say it. You're willing to learn. You take the initiative. These are some examples of how you've taken the initiative to learn yourself, solve problems. So I think be confident. I think, I think that that is great advice and especially you know, students, whether you are a first year student or a senior student, you have, you know, a lot of those things you can showcase and shine. You know, when you're meeting yeah. with, you know, maybe you'll meet with Shelly next week at the CPEC, That's you know, right. virtual career That's fair. Right. So you can <laughs> highlight those things. So that is such great advice. Um, well, that was our final question. Uh, we just want to thank you, Shelly, so much um, for sure. joining us today and everything that you had to share. Um, it really was a great opportunity to learn more about the Commonwealth. Um, so awesome. be sure, you know, students check out the rest of our events this week um, to interact with us. We're looking forward to continue connecting with you and, you know, stay tuned um, for the email information. Jeff can drop it in the chat again so that you can reach out to Cassandra um, and the website. We put it in there a couple of times just so you can see all the opportunities the Commonwealth has to offer. But I want to thank you for attending and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Yes, thank you so much.